Tinder dates are really fun. So. <laughs> yep. All right, let's give them a round of applause. All righty. All right, all right. First of all, I just like to say I've never been to a conference that had so many beautiful people here. So first of all, give yourselves a round of applause, everyone. It feels really, really good to be here right now. And I want to steal a couple minutes of your day to talk to you about Abacus. And the title of my talk is Shaping the Future of My Country with My Side Project. And I know how much we all love side projects, so let's get it started. First of all, who here, quick show of hands, who here has heard of Belize? <laughs> all right, that was way too easy. Um, who here has been to Belize? <laughs> 10 points for each one of you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, so I'm from Belize. What you just saw was a picture of my home country and a little about Belize. Um, we're actually the only English-speaking country in Central America we're actually neighbored by Mexico and Guatemala. So, and um, we actually have the lowest population density in the region, similar to our friend from Bahrain. Um, we actually only have 350,000 people. So listening to um, um, the talk earlier when they said some of the school population is bigger than my entire country. I mean, how crazy is that? And a lot of you guys already know, Belize is just awesome. <laughs> That's a picture of the southern part of our country if you ever feel like going down there. So, I wanted to give you a little bit of history. I uh, actually used to be a desktop application developer, and more specifically, a Java desktop application developer. And what that meant for me was I was able to walk into someone's office and tell them, look, I can build you an application that runs on anything. It could be Windows, Mac, Linux, the server, and it'll just run. And then, I, there's this guy, I think you've heard of him, his name was Steve Jobs. He worked for a little company called Apple, and they came out with the tablet. Uh, well, I, they made it popular. And they suddenly turned me into a liar. And I don't like being a liar. <laughs> and so I said, well, how can I keep saying that about myself? And so I had the idea to, well, I needed to learn web apps. And so I started messing with it. It was Google Web Toolkit at the time. And my buddy pulled me aside and he said, like, Psst, don't mess with that. Check out this newfangled thing. It's called Grails. And I said, all righty, I'll try it out. And I loved it. And I kept working with it from there. And of course, I needed a side project to test it out on. And I already had um, this system in place. And I decided, well, let me try and port it into a web application. And that's how Abacus was born. So about Abacus, it was um, designed to solve many of the administrative headaches that schools in the Caribbean region um, has. We actually do things a little bit differently from you guys. Uh, Abacus, as of just before I came, we're actually running in 18 schools across the country where uh, we have the information for about 18,000 students right now. And it's just uh, 428,000 lines of codes, all third party libraries and everything included. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, why another student information system? And those of you who like XKCD, you know that slide. Like I mentioned earlier, we actually do do a couple of things differently. Um, for one thing, while uh, our teachers are the ones that move from class to class, so all are up, until about, uh, up until about the end of high school, all the children actually sit together in the classrooms, and it's the teachers are the ones that move from class to class. And parents actually are responsible for picking up their child's report cards up to high school, up to the end of high school. So we had a couple different problems that we needed to solve. Yeah, I remember when I was a student, um, you would be getting grades and stuff like that, but depending on if the teacher used waiting or not, you weren't exactly sure where you stood. So I wanted to fix that. Uh, parents, parents are hard to keep informed. It's all nice and everybody, all the parents are in lovely and interested when the child is young, so up until about the toddler stage and everything to that effect. And after they get older, it gets harder and harder to communicate with parents. Trust me, my mom and my wife are teachers. I'm telling you this. <laughs> um, for staff, like I mentioned, my mom and my wife are teachers. I spent years looking at my mom, sitting down, double, triple, quadruple checking grades, 
because in Belize, grades are very important, in particular math and English, because those are required subjects. If you fail math or English, you have to essentially repeat the entire year. So it's very, very important that children actually um, pass those classes. And of course, administration has a headache of actually manually keeping those grade books and uh, student behavioral records. Uh, we have something called the demerit system in Belize, where if a child misbehaves, then they get a demerit. And I've heard stories of children actually making their own demerit cards. And so one teacher would have their demerit card, another teacher would have their demerit card when it's really supposed to be one. So yeah, they get very, very crafty. And just in case you've forgotten how awesome Belize is, a little <laughs> reminder. All righty, so Abacus actually does a lot of different things. Uh, we have a couple different modules. We have the student um, bio information. We have their contact information. We have the guardian, medical information, and entire student profile. We track the student's behaviors, their merits, demerits, jugs, detentions, suspensions, probations, a whole lot of things. Uh, oh, real-time grades, we have attendance, uh, events and bulletins, applicants tracking, incidents, logbooks, and we have a whole bunch of reports. And all that's well and good, but we didn't start there. Just to give you a little idea of what it looks like, this is actually a student profile. And those little squiggly lines what you're seeing, that you're seeing down at the bottom there, that's each and every assessment that this child has received over the course of the semester, plotted on that line there. If they wanted to, administration can just go in and uncheck, um, they can filter down and see each subject by itself, and the schedule adjusts automatically. Um, we've got a couple other tabs, grades, merits, demerits, all of that's nice. It's just one central location for anybody, the student, the parent, or anything, to view all the information about that student. Uh, this screenshot is um, the end result of all of that, really. This is one of the main reasons the schools like the system. It's because it um, gives them the report card that they need very, very quickly. And this is what the teacher sees, um, their real-time gradebook. This is very helpful for them. So one of the key, one of the key things um, that the teachers like it for is they get real-time information. And so as soon as they're putting, done putting in their grades and everything, they get all that feedback right away. Again, got to remind you guys, <laughs> come on down. <laughs> so Abacus is actually no longer my side project. Uh, I'm a full-time consultant now, so that's definitely something I'm proud of. And that means that I have a lot more things to think about. And there's, I want to give you guys a story of how I got there. So the first story uh, that I want to talk to you is about building local. There are definitely, as I mentioned before, other student information systems on the market. But we're Belize, and we actually operate differently, and the whole region operates differently from you guys. So one, things that I, one of the things I needed to do was I needed to give my country something that was intuitive. A lot of the times, um, if I've heard it all, schools would try information systems and whatnot, but it just didn't fit the way they did things. And so they ended up maybe scrapping it after a while. So I needed, it, I needed to give them something intuitive that they could just go in there and use and not be calling me. Because when I started this, it was a side project. I had a full-time job. I couldn't be there answering support calls. And yes, Mr. Johnson, this is how you do this and whatnot. So I needed it to be intuitive for them. And I also needed it to be flexible. I didn't want to just build it for one school. I wanted various multiple schools to be able to use the system and for it to still be useful for them. So I want to tell you the story about my first client, which just so happened to be my alma mater, the high school I went to. And coincidentally, my buddy, he is the IT teacher there. And I was, while I was building this as a side project, I decided to you know, bounce some ideas off of him and whatnot. And he, he loved the system when I showed it to him and whatnot. Because remember, I was just playing with this to learn a new framework. When I showed it to him, he loved the idea. He's like, dude, we need something like this at the school. I was like, all right, let's go. Let's get it set up. So the first meeting that I had was with the principal. And this just so happened to be my high, old high school teacher that's now the principal. 
And you can imagine me walking in there, palms all sweaty and everything, and sitting down, and I was like, hi, Ms. Jorgensen, how you doing? You know, he's like, good, Maurice. And I showed it to them, and they loved it, and they bought into it. And it, they loved it so much, we just kept, um, it didn't have all this stuff that it has now. I'll show you more about that in a few. But they loved it. They loved it so much that they were able to, she invited me essentially to their AGM meeting. All the principals get together every couple months and they have a meeting. And she invited me to that meeting and I presented it. And right off that meeting, I got like 10 new clients. So it was really, really a nice experience with them. <laughs> Again, <laughs> I want to talk to you quickly about the first version. A lot of times when we're building open source projects, uh, we like to think, well, we need it to be done. As you saw in a presentation earlier, it's always helpful to break it up into smaller steps. So the first version didn't have that big laundry list of things that you saw. It actually just had a student roster, an instructor list, a homeroom, and a gradebook. That's all it had. We don't need to be focused on building the entire product and launching it. Just get it out there and test the water. See if there is value in your project. I want to talk to you about um, iterating, building new features incrementally. As I just mentioned, all the features weren't there. One of the key features that the school needed was in the year report card that wasn't in there at all when they decided to sign up for Abacus. Well, fortunately for me, as you notice, it's end of year report card. They don't need it until the end of the year. <laughs> I just put it on the road map and moved on from there. I want to tell you a story about listening and building, uh, sorry, listening to the, your actual clients. Uh, this is something that, uh, that's very meaningful to me because a lot of how Abacus was built was through conversation and talking. And I was talking to one of the administrators a day and they were like, Maurice, uh, I need a report from you. I need, I need you to help me. I need you to build me a report. And the report that they needed was a list of the top performers for all the different subjects. I was like, okay, no problem. I can build that. That's, you know, run the query, show it up in a PDF report, and we're done. But something told me that there was more behind it. So I got to talking to her. You know, well, what are you, exactly are you planning to do with this report? And she says, well, we need to send it off to the printer and get that all um, fired up and everything. And we need to be able to, you know, essentially print out awards cards. Now, the schools try to encourage um, good grades and everything. So at the end of every semester, they give the top performers of each subject an award card. I was like, who could do that? So this is the report they wanted. And this is the award card that's printed out of the system. Now, all they, instead of having to send it off to the printer and everything to that effect, all they do is they go to the system, click one button, and they have their report. It's always important to listen to your people. Come on down, guys. <laughs> One of the things I want to talk to you about is the tree spires of community. And some of you may have heard it before, but it's very, very important to me. And you guys are a testament of that right now. And I'll tell you why. I believe that you need to surround yourself with tree type of people, people you aspire to be like. So right in this room, we've got Saron, we've got Scott Hanselman, we've got Chris over there, we've got Ben at the back there. These are people in the community who are leaders in the community, and they are just so awesome at disseminating information and conveying good messages. You need people like that. You also need people we conspire with. If I didn't have my buddy at the high school, maybe, who knows, maybe Abacus would have stayed in GitHub or something to that effect. We need people who we conspire with. Kodanangubi is a great, great place for that. So many different like-minded people all over, and you guys just come together. You need people to know, well, it's really helpful to know that we're not alone in this journey and we have the community and that support. It's very, very important. And also too, I feel we really need to inspire people. Again, Saron, Code Newby, bring you guys here. He's inspiring you all, but you guys can also inspire people. Maybe you have a neighbor who doesn't even know that technology is even an option for her. There's so many free resources out there that we can point them to, you know. It's important for you guys to inspire people and be the change that you wish to see in the world. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your time. My name is Maurice Rogers. Have a good day. Have a good day.